Hi, I'm Choshi. This video is part of CocoVid. Stay tuned to collect your badge. To draft or to drape? That is the question. There's no one correct way to pattern a garment. There's a lot of personal preference involved and developing of habits. However, there are two basic techniques you can use. Drafting and draping. I'd like to explain the pros and cons of both, so that if you've mostly only done one and are thinking of getting into the other, or if you're only just starting out on your patterning journey and you're trying to decide which technique to start with, this will hopefully help you a bit. But let's talk a bit first about what each one of them is. Flat pattern drafting means taking a person's measurements and then transferring those measurements onto a flat piece of paper in the shape of the pattern pieces you need for the garment you're making. For instance, for a shirt, the basic measurements you'd need would be the bust, waist, and hip circumferences, the shoulder width, and the length between all of those. You then draw out a quarter of all those circumferences on the paper with the length measurements connecting them. Then you mark the points of your design along those lines and connect the dots until you have your garment pattern. Of course, there are more measurements you can take to make the fit more exact, like taking separate front and back measurements for each circumference, bust width, dark placement, etc. But that's the basics of what drafting is. Draping is taking a piece of fabric and putting it on the dress form or the person you want the garment to fit and then pinching, pulling, and folding until it becomes the shape of the garment you want it to be, pattern piece by pattern piece. You still need to be aware of where those bust waist and hip measurements are and mark them out, along with any other measurements you can think of. But you have much more freedom to go crazy and try out different shapes. The fabric you use should be as close to the final garment as possible. The fabric usually used for draping is called muslin or toile, a white woven cotton. There are two basic draping techniques. In the first one, you wrap the muslin around the body, or half or a quarter of the body, and pin out darts, neckline, waistline, etc. Once you're happy with the shape of your drape, you mark those pinned lines with marker or pen, flatten the fabric, and transfer it to paper to make your pattern. This is usually used for basic blocks and generally big pattern pieces. In the second, you mark out your design lines in a dark tape or ribbon on the form before you drape the fabric and mark those lines out on a separate piece of muslin for every pattern piece as you go. Then each shape you drape, you transfer to a paper pattern. If you are working on a big floppy shape, drape it, then mark out the edges so you know what shape it needs to be once the pattern is transferred to paper. For instance, if there are pleats, mark where the pleats meet while the fabric is still on the form. So I can use the two different methods and yet finish with the same or very similar pattern. Following both draping and drafting, there is a fitting process wherein you make mock-ups, sometimes called toiles, and make changes to the pattern to make the garment fit the person better. So, should you draft or drape? I have heard people swear by one and decry the other. I think they both work, but for different applications, or perhaps for different people. Let's talk about some similarities and differences between them. Do you need to know what the final project will look like right from the start? With drafting, yes. It's a good idea to start with a sketch of the final garment. Otherwise, you won't really know what to draw. With draping, not really. You can play with the fabric and make decisions as you go. But it's still better to know what you're planning. What's the creativity process like? With drafting, the creative stage is usually in the planning stage, before you start. Though you can always change the plan while drafting. With draping, the creative stage is while you're draping. You can go with the flow and try different things out and just put the fabric in different ways and try different things and just go crazy. <laughs> How much access to your model do you need? Well, for drafting, you need a relatively short session just to take the person's measurements. With draping, on the other hand, you need either a really long session where you drape on the person or you drape on a dress form, but then you have a longer fitting process. How accurate is each method? Well, drafting involves a lot of precise math and a little of intuition. The final garment will be accurate to the pattern. With draping, the final garment will be accurate to the drape. Though, if you're used to working with numbers, not knowing what the measurements are can be quite scary. How much math do you need to use? With drafting, a lot. With draping, very little. Symmetry or asymmetry? With drafting, it's very easy to make symmetrical garments. You make a pattern, you cut it on the fold, and it's a symmetrical garment. With draping, it's much easier to accommodate asymmetries in the body. Everybody has asymmetrical features in their body, and with draping it's so much easier to accommodate that. It's also a bit easier with draping 
to plan for asymmetrical patterns. How can you control the fabric grain? Well, with drafting, you can try different fabric directions during the mock-up process. And with draping, you can try different fabric directions very easily while draping. Can you make bias grain dresses with these techniques? With drafting, it's possible, but probably very complicated. You would basically have to know in advance how much that fabric stretches on the bias. With draping, it's very easy. You just put it on the form and it stretches and you drape. What materials will you need for each process? For drafting, you will need parchment paper, pencils, an eraser, and rulers. For draping, you will need fabric, pins, a pen, and either a dress form or the person you're draping on. Be aware of materials cost. Fabric is more expensive than drafting paper where I live, but that might not be true for you. Well, how long does it take to use each of these methods? Well, that depends on you. Practice, 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 and then more practice. At the end of the day, both of these techniques are completely valid. It's just the question of mindset and preference. Those who have more of a math-minded brain or are good at visualizing things in their mind's eye might prefer drafting. Those who are visual thinkers, prefer to see a physical thing or enjoy working with their hands, might prefer draping. It is equally valid to mix these techniques, to draft some parts of the garment and drape others, or use one method for one garment and the other for a different garment. Whatever works for you, at the time. It's a good idea to try both out and see which you prefer. There are some great videos out there that explain how to get started in both drafting and draping. I'll link some of them below. Now go right off into the sunset and make all the things! This video is part of CocoVid. CocoVid stands for Costume College Video and is a project we costumers, costume YouTubers, have brought about to fill the hole that c the cancellation of Costume College and every other event and conference this year has left in all of our hearts and schedules. Costume College is a costume conference that was supposed to happen this weekend. I was supposed to be there for the first time. So this weekend, we costumers are flooding YouTube with costume related videos for everyone's enjoyment and education. I'll put a link to the full CocoVid schedule in the description. Go check out all the wonderful videos coming out this weekend. In addition to that, we have created a fun badge collection game for you to play as you make your way through all the offerings the costume community has for you this weekend. In order to get started collecting your badges, you you will need to either download the free Badge Wallet app via Android or Apple, or you can go to badgecraft.eu to claim a badge via your computer's web browser. Then once you've done that, you can start collecting. You collect a badge from each YouTube video or activity happening on Instagram or on the CocoFit Discord server, and whoever collects the most badges gets untold glory! Just kidding, there's no prize. So, here is my QR code for the app and the written code for the website for this video's badge. So get collecting. Use the hashtag CocoVid badges on Instagram to show off your badge collection. Visit the CocoVid Discord server channel badge game, links below, to show off and chat about your collection. Try to collect them all, and most of all, have fun. See you in my next video. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and go check out all the other wonderful CocoVid videos this weekend. Goodbye!